Alright, hello everyone, my name is Champ, welcome back to The Witcher Circus, and today is Easter, so happy Easter everyone, and in the Easter spirit, there are going to be Easter eggs throughout this video, so there's going to be a grand total of three Easter eggs, so if you can find them all, then congratulations, and uh, the Easter eggs are essentially going to be things that are kind of out of the ordinary, things that are... A little bit off with uh, with what's going on right now so hopefully you can figure it out that way so today I am playing with the pocket sand team and it's the pocket sand team because it's technically chef stress number two so it's the one with the antiquarian kind of the, the stinky chef stress honestly this is the one that the least amount of people play I don't really know why I think it's generally pretty decent if you play it normally of course if you play it the way I'm playing it now it it's definitely questionable because I'm gonna be spamming pocket sand and the pocket sand is of course flash powder the antiquarian just grabs a little bit of sand off the beach here which kind of fitting that we do have this background and she, she just hurls it at someone's eyes and uh, tries to remove their accuracy now the reason this ability sucks is that it only applies minus 15 accuracy which really isn't that much to one character which you know it's just one character and it's only for two rounds <laughs> it's really not very good even the hellions yop is a hell of a lot better though we do get immediate value out of it so I guess I can't really complain that much. I'm gonna go for the Punish here on the Abomination, and yes, things look good so far. So I'm really looking forward to see if people are gonna find the Easter eggs, because one of them is super easy to find, the other is uh, kind of average difficulty, and the third one is really, really difficult to find and actually figure out uh, what it is. Quite, uh, quite difficult, but I, I do hope that you get it. I, I imagine there's quite a lot of people watching, so <laughs> it's gonna be a fun experiment. So, how is it, how's your day going, dear Anon? How was your Easter? Did you spend some quality family time, as I did? Did you make a, a little bit of an unconventional Easter by, I don't know, going out with, uh, with someone else that maybe is quite special to your heart? I'm not entirely sure. But in terms of how the Butcher Circus is going, I am not liking how this match is turning out so far. I have to deal with the flash of the Taz Reign of Sorrows, while well, I don't, I have Reclaim. And while Reclaim is a good ability, it's not that good, let's be honest, it's not that good. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, yeah, I do not have tears of the wall, so I'm just gonna spam yet another flash powder onto this flash. I'm doing 11 stress with each hit because of the impossible glyph, so that's definitely being a little bit helpful here. Yeah, I should explain the, the idea behind the trinkets on my team, so... Of course, the Antiquarian, if she's going to spam uh, her Flash Powder, she's going to bring Impossible Glyph, which is going to give us some stress dealt. <laughs> Did I really just miss an Abomination? Seriously? Oh, that's so annoying. Honestly, the hit chance wasn't that good. Yeah, the hit chance wasn't that good. The Regis Cloak isn't, uh, isn't that amazing, but that's still kind of unsettling that it happened. Yeah, very, very annoying. But, you know, we do have the Impossible Glyph there, which is giving... <sighs> okay, we do have it, so we have a little bit of more accuracy, a little bit of an extra debuff skill chance. Wow, okay, the RNG is being very, very wild today. They miss me with a command buff. What? Oh, right, I am debuffing them, so it does make sense that they do miss, but that's still kind of wacky that I do a repulse for 14. How the hell did I hit for that much? God damn spike chain. It really is nasty, isn't it? Yeah, what's also nasty is this flagellant having gone to the pipe solution in second spot. That's definitely not it. Father Nicholas isn't in on the Easter egg shenanigans, so don't be looking at his team thinking like, oh, the Easter egg is, uh, I don't know, uh, having the net in position two, which, you know, it's what we usually do. So no, that's definitely not the, the Easter egg. It goes for a stun on me, does it land? Yes, it does. I do a very nice repast on there, but is it enough is the question. I could go for a guard here, but you know, there's Hounds Harry, so nah, not really ideal if you ask me. I could go for a flash powder to try and remove some accuracy, but honestly with the command buffs, yeah, I'm not seeing it. 
there's going to be more DOT coming my way, so I have to keep being aggressive here. So in terms of the rest of the trinkets, I brought the Black Diamond Mirror on the Antiquarian because it gives her a little bit of dodge, a little bit of survivability, so... I was hoping that if she were to be the last character alive against something like a damage team, she would be dodgy and also apply accuracy debuffs on the last character, and that would have honestly been really cool, but... You know, I, I just end up going against Shep's dress, so what can you do? The Flagellant is uh, using the Exotic Snuff and the Reclaim, so instead of using the very aggressive Shep's dress setup, since she's going to be spamming this and not regen, I decided to bring the regen on the Flagellant and just try to have a little bit of a more defensive setup here. So far it's working not too well, but if it were against a damage team it would be hell of a lot better. The men at arms, since I wasn't really planning to spam command buffs, since the antiquarian doesn't really need it, and since the flagellant isn't going Reign of Sorrows, I thought, ah, eh, I can get away with bringing Eerie Eye and just spamming Bellow instead of spamming the command. And uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen, I don't think. That was a double crit from that doggy. God damn. Yeah, that's that's very rough. My one hope, my one dream is that I actually just outpace this flagellant and then my flagellant just takes the match after that. But without even getting the second transformation off, with there being yet another transformation here, that flagellant having crimson hook while I have freaking snuff, so I'm probably gonna miss an exanguinate or two. <laughs> yeah, things are not coming up Shepherd Doggy, they really aren't. Okay, that's a damage buff though, that's definitely going to be helpful. I also get even more damage because I'm going first, and I do land the min roll. But you know, min roll is better than zero, now the abomination's dropping down, which is most definitely what we want. Sadly, the antiquarian can't get death blows, but you know, whatever, whatever can you do. I would talk about the abomination's trinkets, but you know, it's just more the same. It's just rich, just cloak, spike chain, very usual setup. Didn't bring the net because I felt like since I don't have to deal with repast, I don't really have this sort of idea of having the net to disrupt the character so they can't go for that repulsing ability, so I just thought that I know just just bring the spike chain, make him a little bit more of a damage dealer with those blights, because I'm probably going to need it, let's be honest. Okay. Now for this, I'm getting one step closer to stressing this flatulent out, even though I've spent the last four rounds just dropping flash powder on him. Yeah. It's not a very good ability. The one use that it does have that is pretty good, you know, it has two uses. One use is uh, having the stress ability without having to deal with repulse. It's definitely pretty cool. And it's also D stealth, so that's very helpful. Another use it has is after a character has a heart attack, while the festering vapors wouldn't do enough stress, this most definitely would do enough stress after a character has a heart attack and uh, drops to death store. So you just drop that flash powder and you just uh, take the the kill on there, which is definitely what you want to see. Now I am hoping that with act outs and with affliction, somehow I can turn this match around. But let's be honest, the men at arms and the doggy are in absolute perfect shape. I am, I am not seeing it happen too too easily here. That's an affliction though, it goes for the Rapturous, and how bad is it going to be is my question. They did get a 25 on my Abomination, so I'm hoping to get a 25 on them as well. Yeah, 25 dodge, 2 accuracy debuffs. It just doesn't really work, because the Man at Arms uses one command buff, it gives everyone in the party 20 accuracy and 4 crit for 3 rounds. It's 2 rounds for himself, but the other guys are 3 rounds. She does a minus 15 accuracy debuff for 2 rounds. It's not even close. Now, it's actually outrageous how bad flash powder is compared to, to the command buff. It just gives way too much accuracy for an ability like this to handle. So it's definitely not a good matchup facing Shep's stress. Not a lot of good teams have a good matchup against it, I'll be honest, but I don't take the 25% death blow here, so right now it's probably just going to be a slam. Push onto my flagellant. Oh no, it's going to be onto the man at arms. Well, <laughs> crits for three, by the way. <laughs> Fearful Death Door, damage debuffs, and I can't even punish it at this point. 
yeah, there's there's really not too much I can do. It's just a very, very big uh, skill issue that I have going right now. But I will go for a match number two and we'll see if it goes any better. Alright, and here we go straight into a match number two. And I specifically asked Father Nicholas to play WD because I think I will have a better matchup against WD. It's not every day you say that. Usually you want to stay as far away from it as possible, but... Today is a special day, and hopefully things go differently for us. So already, my 45 dodge is um, being very non-existent, but I'll just go ahead and drop a take cover, and I will lose one of my take covers, but overall, it's a perfectly fine outcome here. I will take it. Here comes the manacles. Oh, God. Yeah, that's why you don't, you don't ask your opponent to bring WD. <laughs> it goes for the... 90 hit chance and gets a crit on it <laughs> as you do as you do i suppose in that case i will i will just drop a bell here before any more damage comes through this man of arms is gonna have to be the goat right now he's gonna have to apply a lot of damage debuffs he's gonna have to bring the wd slowly down and just try to take the W that way. Of course, my opponent knows that and is going to go for the stun, but fails the 70. So that's a very, very good outcome for me, failing the 70% stun chance there. That means I get another bell off, which is going to be minus 40% damage on everyone, which is really good. I think that's a misplay. I feel like with minus 20% damage, you're generally fine just shooting there, even though I have regen. You're fine just bringing me closer to the store. I could be at 6 HP right now had you gotten a crit, but yeah. Oh, it does get rid of my stealth as well, so I suppose it does make sense. But I could just... I could just do it again. Yeah, I could just do it again. I'm, I'm okay with this back and forth. I think I will win at this back and forth because now your stun chances aren't quite as good. I have regens coming through and the transformation will also come through eventually. And come on, another sunrise. Yeah, would have been really nice, wouldn't it? But uh, no, not, not today. Yeah, not yet at least. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a reclaim now onto this man at arms just to give him some extra HP and we'll see where we take it from there. I'm also okay just eventually dropping a Protect Me if I really want to, if I just get rid of all the take covers, but we'll see. It goes for the stun there, I was kind of expecting that. Does he get it? No, he does not. That's very good for me. That is genuinely quite good. I would go for my action here, but I'm expecting a 29 crit, so I will not go for my action here. I will wait for the Arbalist shot first, and then I will click my Abomination, but it looks like she just decides to go for the Man of Arms instead. Does a big ka-chunk of our health bar, but you know, what can I do about it? And I'm just gonna go slam transform on this Crusader, and we fail the push, which is good and bad. It's good because now there's no Holy Lance, it's bad because there's still Stunning Blow, which is, you know, really bad. But yeah, what what can I do about it, right? Not not very much at this point. I do want to keep the regen here. So I'm most likely just gonna drop a bellow. I'm not sure if the Arbalest will try to flare this bellow. That is a possibility. I wonder if she tries doing that. I really haven't done a lot of stress, have I? I dropped one transform and two bellows in so far three rounds. Yeah, I haven't really done too much. It goes for that, which means I'm just gonna go ahead and click here, because I'm stunned. I don't want to get hit with a very high damage finish him. It's probably gonna be a double stun onto the Abomination, though. Good play by Father Nicholas to notice that, you know... Oh, that doesn't get it, though. This Crusader has not been very good with those stuns. He's been failing kind of consistently, honestly. And I am very much enjoying it right now. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a claim here. I will say having the snuff on the Flagellant is definitely a good assurance because every stun chance they have is pretty much a 50-50 onto the flash, which is still good, but at least it's not uh, it's not insanely good. I could do this, but <laughs> if I try to do that, I might get stunned. I do have 30 dodge, but is it enough is my question. The Festering Vapors here would feel so good, by the way. Not right now, but Festering Vapors would feel very good as an ability overall. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely quite good. I could uh, drop a protect me here, which I do because I was running out of time. I barely noticed it, but I do drop to protect me there. It's going to give me a little bit of prot. It's going to give him dodge, which doesn't matter. Oh, could matter, actually. 90 hit chance with a stunning blow, but we'll see. Is it going to be a transform slam? No, it's a manacles. Once again, going for the risky stun. Once again, not getting it. I very, very, very much appreciate that. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a flash powder. <laughs> I kind of don't want to go into the Crusader because he might get virtuous. That's kind of the reasoning I'm going into right now. Because if that happens, then my life will be kind of hell. So I'm going to try to get the Arbals deflected here. I know that the accuracy debuff probably won't matter. But I still think that just... Risking it courageous isn't too smart. Goes for the stun, doesn't get it. Once again, my opponent being quite unlucky so far. And I'm just gonna... Ooh, nice! Crit regen heal. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drop a bellow here, as you do. The stress is stacking up, and my opponent hasn't gotten a kill yet. So things are going very, very well for me, I'd say. Especially since right now I'm probably going to drop a redeem. And I'll be mostly okay HP-wise. Uh, no Caltrops having been dropped yet, by the way. I most definitely would have dropped Caltrops round 1 if I were Father Nicholas, especially when you see this Man Arms here, but at the same time, uh, you kind of want to get a kill early or you risk being in this situation. But, you know, what can I say? I can transform... Uh, de-transform and be smile. That's what I can do, which is very, very helpful here because... If you try hitting into him, there won't be there won't be a damage buff anymore, right? I feel like I've been stunned for too many rounds. So there's no damage buff, but there's still the spike chain, so I might still hurt for a little bit here. And you know, you have to deal with the repulse, and even if you bring me down to zero HP, I'm gonna redeem and I can probably still drop uh, still make use of my regen for the next round so yeah let's drop the redeem here i'm hoping that the 30 prod kind of saves me from being targeted too hard there's also one bellow debuff on my opponent's side the arbals is about to go afflicted and i'd say that uh, life is not looking too good for father nicholas if i had festering papers at this point it would most likely be gg but since i don't it's still uh it's still kind of close it's definitely still kind of close at this point i'm gonna go ahead and drop bell here there's nothing wrong with just uh, doing more damage debuffs here just making their characters uh, hit me like a noodle at this point which is most definitely what i want just a little love tap from uh, from them that's minus 50 percent damage on the arbalist and I get an irrational pass. She wanted to flare. If you click the arbals at that point, it's because you want to flare. But thankfully, my opponent doesn't uh, doesn't have uh, that uh, doesn't have the possibility of doing that. There is a possibility of being a transform rage though. But if that happens, I can go for something else. I'm gonna go ahead and get the affliction on the bounty hunter here because you know two afflictions uh, nothing uh, nothing to complain about. Those hopeless as well, hopeless and irrational, both of them really suck. So I'm getting quite fortunate with the afflictions. I feel like usually my opponents get like abusive and masochistic most of the time which are just you know pretty much not afflictions at this point. But yeah does finally get to stun on one of my characters, but very nice act out over there. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, click myself here, because, you know, I'm stunned and dazed, so he would hurt quite a bit. He's still gonna hurt my flash wound quite a bit, most likely. But no, he decides to move back. Is it gonna be a move back in the caltrips? At this point, I would actually not caltrips, I don't think, because you really need to get a kill. You really need to disrupt my team, you really need to get a kill because your characters are getting very afflicted. You kind of need a Courageous here to turn the tide of the match, I'd say. You need something like a Courageous. If you get that, maybe there's a shot. Just maybe. I'm gonna go for uh, a Punish on this Abomination. So that's Affliction number 3. And yeah, the Crusader still hasn't gotten a Resolve check, but at this point with two Hopelesses and one Irrational, even if he goes courageous, I still think I'm probably winning here. Is he gonna get the courageous though? Uh, that, that would be game changing. That would most definitely be game changing. 
He's gonna go for the stun. I will have... Oh no, I will not have the extra stun resistance. Well, that makes my life kind of difficult here. Most definitely. I could go for a stun on the Arbalus, but uh, honestly, I'm not sure if that's the smartest decision here. He has dropped a Caltrip, so there's no killing shot coming from him. So I'm actually gonna transform and slam the slam the abomination here. I think that's my best move. I could have gone for a stun on the Arbalus, I definitely could have, but I feel like just doing stress and killing all these characters is a hell of a lot better than doing that. So let's transform while I can and just take it from there. He's not going to be accused of the Beast Smile anytime soon because he wants to get the kill on my Flange, obviously. If he gets the kill on the Flange, then maybe he still has a shot. And speaking of shots, he goes for the shot on that. Uh, and I could try to guard here, but you know, we all know what happens if I guard. Uh, nothing, nothing good comes out of it, obviously. Festering Papers would be so good. Yeah, you'd drop down to zero, you'd go resolve check right now, take a blight. Uh, yeah, that would be amazing. But I'm gonna go ahead, risk it, and go for the Flash Powder on the Bounty Hunter. I'm hoping that I can counter the finisher and the grappling mids, and maybe with my 10 dodge from the Protect Me, I can somehow just maybe, maybe get a dodge on the because of the finish him not being very accurate at this point. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm even considering dropping a bolster right now. <laughs> I am considering it. It could make a difference here. Should I drop a bolster or should I drop a bellow is my question, you know what? I gotta do it, man. I'm gonna drop the bolster. I'm gonna drop it right now, the round 6 bolster, and I'm hoping that my 20 dot flat won't dodges the minus 30 accuracy finish him so let's see it's gonna be a death blow down that's unfortunate what was the accuracy on it well it's it was 88 accuracy against 20 dodge so it was a 68 hit chance ah, it was still pretty good it was still a pretty good hit chance let's be honest yeah just only 20 dodge base on that flange finish him with the finisher just being a little bit too accurate there, even with the bolster. But, you know, if, if, if it had worked, it would have been really funny. So I think it was still uh, worth it to, to go for that. That's a very nice piece. Smile and... Oh, God. Yeah. <sighs> I, I knew it. I just knew that the Crusader would go for it. Just, he goes powerful, which is still really freaking good. But, you know, at least it's not courageous. At the very least, it is not courageous. So, I guess I can't complain. I, I guess I generally cannot. How many damage debuffs do you have on right now? Honestly, not that many. So, let's uh, drop another cute little one on there. And, yeah. Now I have to deal with the Flagellant's boosted uh, resistances, damage buffs to counter my Bellow debuffs. And, you know, just overall not doing any sort of act out, so... Definitely not the strongest Virtue powerful. It's honestly the balanced one out of the bunch. I, I do think so. Goes for the manacles at this door. At this door, against my 40 dodge antiquarian. And lands it. Hmm... Quite, uh, quite unlucky, if you ask me. Quite unlucky. Yeah, I've not been getting a lot of dodges. I did get some very, very clutch stun resistances uh, earlier in the match, but yeah, that's also quite helpful and quite clutch. I'm thinking that maybe Flash Powder gets the kill on there, but I'm not entirely sure yet. I am not entirely sure. Oh, powerful, please don't. Please don't, powerful, not the crit Holy Lance. No, not the crit Holy Lance, powerful, don't. Oh, it goes right to the flame. That's interesting. I'm not sure if I would have done that. That is most definitely on the interesting side of things. Well, I could drop a Flash Powder here. It would do enough stress to the point that if he clicks, he dies. So I think that's generally a good idea. If you click, you die. I is is definitely quite the threat. So let's do it. Yeah, if you click, you die <laughs> with this abomination. So he has to go for a heal with another character, but Hopeless could say no. And I am hoping that the hopeless says no. Powerful, no act out for the buff just yet. It's a 25% uh, chance each and every single round to give all the other characters a 15% damage buff for, I believe, 4 rounds. It might not be 4 rounds, but I'm pretty sure it is. I'm 
pretty, pretty sure. I'm gonna drop a guard here on the Antiquarian. That's gonna give me prot, which is helpful, and it's gonna keep her safe, which is helpful. And of course, I can't drop a bell right now, or else I don't get the kill on the Abomination, so... Uh, you know, I'm kind of trying to stay away from it. Opalus doesn't say no to the heal, which is sad. So, I don't have any transforms already. I suppose I will just do this then. I'll just spam more beast piles here, make myself kind of a porcupine, and uh, just take it from there. A little bit of extra stress, I think, onto the Crusader. I am getting the Blights, which is quite good. The Blight resistance is not coming in clutch. And the Abomination. Ooh, that's actually really good. Him dropping to that store cause just a little bit of stress to the uh, to the bounty hunter. Him having a heart attack, I mean, not dropping to this store. That's very, very helpful. Job's impossible, a bit more stress, and now the bellow should be at least one kill, because he dropped to this door, so he took the horror, and now the bellow will be at least one kill. It's actually two, because of the pit fighter's helm, and at this point, on the 3v2 against the WD, even with powerful, I do not think this Crusader is enough to save your match. Just, this is why I say that stuns are very powerful, but they're not impossible to play against. This team is definitely sought out to deal with something like this. It doesn't have the perfect setup, but it definitely has a good enough setup to deal with it. I will say, uh, so, you know, I you could argue that I kind of have a counter pick here, but all it took was just a little bit of unlucky in the start of the match, like failing a 55% stun, failing a 70% stun, and at that point, it was almost over. It was almost over, because if it takes you like four rounds to get a kill against the stress team, and this is a slow stress team, if it takes you like four rounds to do that, you are basically never going to recover, and you're never going to be able to, to take the W, which is sad for the WD, because it's the best team in the Butcher Circus, right? So we are almost at the end of the Easter episode today. I will remind you to write down the comment on the easter eggs if you have found them. They were both, uh, all three of them were present during uh, during the matches. Uh, both matches, I mean, so I am, I wonder if people will figure them out, because it honestly wasn't that difficult. All you have to do is just look around the screen and notice some, uh, some little differences. Hopefully you can notice exactly what I'm talking about, but... Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. If you don't notice it, probably someone else will, so definitely check the comments. Uh, anyway, I did I did a little bit of, of an old funny that I read off of Twitter. There was something with... Oh, I, I, I would probably spoil it if I mentioned it. I would probably spoil it. So if you haven't found it yet, this will be a spoiler for one of them. So I noticed something about a tweet from JK Rowling that was something about oil. And what she did was she replaced the, instead of writing oil down normally, she wrote, instead of an L, she wrote a capital I, which is what I did with There is Justice in this world. It's a bit more noticeable on the, on the Dwarf and Axe font, which is the font that Darkest Dungeon uses, compared to the Twitter font, but, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely quite a troll. I, I'm not sure if you noticed it or not, but I have spoiled one of them. Anyway. Hope y'all enjoyed today's video, hope y'all had an happy, a happy Easter, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.